Welcome to a special circumstance review. Today we're going to take a look at the Phoenix PD32. Uh, this is part of their EDC lineup and is a 2CR123 light, or also as I'm running it right now, it is a uh, 18650 light. So the barrel will accept those sizes of batteries. Um, which is the way I prefer to use them since it's a lot more economical in the long run. Um, this is a multi-mode light. Modes are switched with this button right here on the side. Only switches modes when the light is on. And you have your typical forward clicky here. Pretty decent action. It's fairly smooth. Nice solid click when you click it on. Uh, tail cap is partially guarded, which I like because it doesn't really impede functionality. And while you can push down on it and activate the light, as you can see here, can't click it on. That's well, kind of nice. Um, narrowing is pretty good. Machining overall is, is standard, honestly. Um, Phoenix, it's quite good as usual. Um, it has a little bit of a sort of anti roll feature with these flats on the head here. Um, and that's not to say you can't roll it, but the, the clip is probably a more of an anti roll feature, honestly. Um, threading is quite good. It's very smooth. This uses the square cut machinist threading. Anodized so you can lock out the light, which is also good for storage, etc. Um, and it's anodized on both ends here. And you can see this is a light I've been carrying since there's some dirt on the O-ring here, or around the, uh, next to the O-ring. And this is the 18650 battery I'm using. Here's the inside of the, uh, the head. Nice solid contact. Um, pretty nice light. Smooth reflector, anti-reflective coated lens, glass lens, which is nice. Um, crenellated bezel. Uh, this is not really aggressive enough to where I'd call this a strike bezel or an attack bezel, if you will, or a quote-unquote tactical bezel. Uh, it does, however, let you see if you have left the light on when you set it down on your desk or whatever. So that's kind of nice. Uh, it's not something that's going to be looked at as a weapon. doesn't mean that you couldn't hit somebody with it. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Nice people don't do things like that, right? <clears throat> yeah. Um, lanyard holes. You could probably put gutted paracord through those if you wanted to. Uh, more really meant for the typical sort of camera style lanyards. The clip works pretty well. It's a nice clip. Um, it snaps onto the body of the light so it's not like permanently attached. You can fairly easily take it off. Um, I have not had it come off on its own. Uh, I have had the clip catch on a seat belt a couple of times and get bent out, but I bent it back and it's been fine. Still has plenty of spring tension. The finish on the clip seems durable, uh, more durable than the typical sort of painted finish you see on a lot of these. Anodizing throughout is, of course, uh, Type 3 hard anodized black, as you can see. Matching is quite good as far as the color goes. Uh, it does wear a little around the edges. There's a few edges that could maybe be not quite so sharp, but this, these are honestly not bad. You're not going to cut yourself on them but they are definitely wear points and this has also been dropped a few times but with no ill effects so a pretty durable little light good for everyday carry because of its small size um, we can comp compare it in size to the uh, four sevens obviously the four sevens is a much larger light but it also uses longer batteries so that does have an effect on it this is maybe a little bit thicker about the same size though as the uh, previous 4.7s, the uh, XMLs, the, uh, the Quark X or uh, however you call it, that I reviewed uh, not too long ago. Um, a couple of things I don't care for. Now the mode switching, it, it, I, I do like the mode switching on this better than I like the mode switching on the 4.7s because you don't have to rotate the head. Um, it's just a button. It works fairly well overall. Um, I'm not trying not to blind the camera, but that's the high, low. High is 315. The low is like nine lumens. 
medium is about 70 and then 130 for the uh, well actually the 130 is the high setting the 315 is a turbo setting you know so uh, nice spacing on it I do like that the lowest setting is only nine lumens um, oh you can also of course switch in the strobe um, what you do actually by holding it in for about a second and you can click it hold it in again and it'll go to a different strobe and then there's a sorry I take that back there you go hold it in for two seconds and there's the SOS the strobe is somewhat random the SOS one of course isn't but the actual strobe does cycle through several different uh, settings so and as soon as you click off from the strobe and click back on, well, you're back into the uh, whatever mode you were in before. So a couple, a couple of issues with that. One, while the button is accessible with one hand, it's kind of hard to find. So a lot of times I find myself sort of trying to, where the, where the hell is the button? I'm spinning it around my hand. And that's not really conducive to, to rapid access and certainly not if you're needing to use a strobe. Also, the fact that you have to hold the button in for an entire second before you can use the strobe kind of makes the strobe uh, mildly useless. Now, the SOS beacon, sure, that can come in handy. That's not a bad feature. Um, but that's generally not something that you need right, well, and you'll have to pardon my French here, but that's usually not something that you need right the fuck now. Um, a tactical strobe typically is. That is you trying to disorient somebody who is trying to kill you or hurt you or otherwise. Uh, people you love or whatever. Or, you know, maybe you're just a, kind of a dick and you like fucking with your friends. <clears throat> There's that French again. Um, I would like to see a more pronounced button. Something that's easier to hit and easier to find. That would definitely be a big plus. Um, other than that, the interface is actually not bad, but I would like very much to see that a quick double tap on that button would get you to the strobe. And if you really want to, then you can hold the button in for the two seconds and get your SOS beacon, but you really should be able to just go bam, bam, and there's your strobe. It takes, you know, a fraction of a second and you'd be, you'd be good to go. So... That would be a nice change to see as far as that goes. Other than that, the light itself is actually quite nice. I do like it uh, other than that. Uh, something to be aware of. Uh, this particular light does not have a reverse polarity protection. So what that means to you is that if you screw up and you put in the battery the wrong way and you turn it on and it doesn't come on and you're looking at it, you're looking at it and trying to figure out what's going on, why isn't it coming on, well, uh, you may end up frying the light or the battery, potentially causing a battery fire if you're really unlucky. So pay attention, be aware of it. Use the lockout feature when you're storing it, you know, just so you don't, you know, in a, in a fit of absent-mindedness, you pop in a new battery fresh off the charger and you put it in the wrong way and screw the cap on and, and walk away. Uh, you might come back to a burned-down house that way. So. Just a heads up on that. That is something to be aware of, and it is something to be aware of with other lights as well. Look in the specs. The specs will tell you if it has reverse polarity protection. Okay? So, other than that, that's pretty much all I have. Um, these things can be found pretty much, well, a whole bunch of places. Even REI carries these, and they're about, you know, 70 bucks or so, 65, 70 bucks. Nice little light, good for everyday carry and typical Phoenix quality as far as machining and finishing goes. Um, quality of the light is also quite nice, actually. You can kind of see that here real quick. That's the high, the low. Nice, smooth beam, decent spread, good hotspot, and good clean light. It is not as blue as it appears in the video. That is the camera messing it up, but there you go. All right, so that's all I have, folks. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day.